Africa, the continent with captivating beauty and diverse cultures, has been experiencing rapid economic growth in recent years, particularly in countries like Ethiopia and Kenya. At the same time, the continent continues to battle with conflicts from all directions. Tribal conflicts, deep-rooted social problems like HIV-AIDS, and growing religious radicalism have all created immense hindrances for Africa to prosper. Although Christian missionaries have sown many seeds to spread the gospel of the kingdom of God, many people have yet to hear the good news, and believers need to encounter Jesus Christ at the heart level for personal transformation. Christ is leading Bible League Canada and working with local champions to build His church. Ethiopia, a vast country of over 100 million people and over 90 ethnic groups never became a colony like other African nations. Under 20% of the population claims to be evangelical Christians. The Oromo people represent the largest tribal group in the nation. Pioneers made huge sacrifices for the gospel since the military dictatorship in the 1970s. The new generation of leaders believes the world needs the living Word of God more than anything else and is committed to bring spiritual and social transformation to their communities. Local champions are being trained to start new churches and to invest in their children for transforming their nation. God has given us great vision. We are uh, mobilizing our uh, local people, local churches, to reach unreached people groups. We sent this at least 400 church planters to unreached people group. They are facing the extremists, so pray for protection of God. Where areas do not have schools, teachers are equipped with the Word of God and are trained to impart a biblical worldview to students so as to raise a God-fearing generation. Islamic influence is accelerating in Ethiopia, yet many from the Islamic faith are encountering Christ through the Word of God, dreams, and visions. Suffering for Christ is not uncommon, and they are crying out to Canadians to support their growth. The Amhara region in northern Ethiopia is home to about 28 million people, with 14 million living in the northwest region. An estimated 83% are Coptic Orthodox. Some are practicing versions of Judaism. Over 18% are Muslims. Less than 1% is Evangelical Christians. Majority of the people in the region have Christian roots, but unfortunately, many have become syncretized with witchcraft idol worship and veneration of the priest. Persecution is strong among those who want to bring the gospel to the region. The Amhara region has become a stronghold of fast-growing Islamic extremism. The Quran is being translated into the Amharic language. Islamic University is being built. The next generation is passionate and determined to spread the gospel. Young leaders like Masai is mobilizing university and graduate students to reach the unreached people groups. My passion is to see transformed students, really transformed, who can impact the church, really impact the church, who have passion for mission and also to change the current situation of church, especially in Ethiopia. Then our nation will be impacted. Although the nation was founded by the Word of God, South Sudan's existence has been characterized by formidable political and tribal conflicts, corruption, and incomprehensible brutality, let alone the devastating poverty among the people prior to the birth of the nation. There is an entire generation of children who have known nothing but war and violence. They are in desperate need of healing, and to know that the pain and fear of war is not the way things should be or as God intended. Civil war and armed conflict have caused over a million people to flee to refugee camps. 
We went to the refugee camp, we visit all seven camps, and I have seen my people are suffering. Even I wept. And it was a very difficult time. Children live without school in camps, live without medication. And I have seen children die seven. When I was there, people are just living like in prison. And I have a commitment to God that I will continue to save them. Courageous church leaders recognize that the future of the country lies in their strong faith in Christ and the character of its young people. They believe the country needs to be infused with a biblical worldview and the heart of reconciliation and forgiveness among its young people. We believe Christ is inviting us to help South Sudan raise an entire generation to set a new foundation for this nation. For many people, mentions of Uganda bring images of child soldiers and the warlords ruling over them. This is the devastating history of this country, one in which a generation of children are just beginning to emerge from. Historically a Christian nation, the country also was having one of the continent's highest rates of HIV AIDS. Government education is bearing some fruits, but traditional beliefs of polygamy still influences the Ugandan society deeply. Many still suffer HIV AIDS, broken families, and poverty is still present. Christian leaders are steadfast to stand on the Word of God, believing that the Word and the Church are the solution for their country. If a young generation, they grow up having the basics and knowing the Word of God, it's only then we'll have good policy makers, non-corruptible leaders. So it's key that we teach the Bible. It's key that we start small groups. It's key that we raise leaders who are God-fearing. The church is the solution, but still many districts need to be reached because we are right now operating in 43 out of the 112 districts we have in Uganda. So we have 40 million people. We have refugee camps. We have remote areas. And we have districts which are dominated by Islam. We want to go there, we want to train more leaders, we want to raise up the next generation, God-fearing and knowing the Word of God. You need to stand up for who you are and you need to stand up for the truth because the truth hurts. <laughs> so it really hurts and it's not that easy for the truth to come out, but once it comes out, you need to embrace it and you need to embrace the truth. You need to stand for something right even when others are against it. The devil is devious and he, he plans for everything he does. So he will basically place all his plans on their youth because he knows they're going to grow up and they're going to influence the next generation. Kenya has been experiencing healthy economic growth in recent years. Over 40% of the population is under 15 years old. Despite the positive economic outlook in urban centers, many people from remote areas in the Rift Valley, such as Nakura and Turkana County, are yet to hear the gospel. Since 2009, many local believers have received the call to start new churches in their communities. The good news of the kingdom of God is being preached. They have taken their passion for the word of God to meet with anyone the Lord has led them to. Many people are illiterate, which subsequently leads to the prevalence of traditional religious and cultural beliefs. Early marriages and pregnancy, discrimination towards those who are mentally challenged are all common social problems. The lack of Bibles and discipleship resources leave new believers vulnerable to deception and false teachings. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22 says, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You have heard the petition and desires of these believers to use their lives and the Word of God to transform their communities and nations. Would you join the Spirit of God in bringing righteousness, peace, and joy to Africa? Africa needs you. Join our mission today.